What is up guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to play Akali in Season 14. So Q start is the standard on Akali. This is your poke damage and early on if you're playing against ranked matchups this is also the ability that helps you last hit. Right now play against a Silas though but maybe in the next games I'll be able to show a ranged matchup. So when you hit an enemy champion with an ability that's going to form a ring around them and a lot of your damage is in this ring. Because if you hit right here you have to walk to the edge of it then you're going to pick up an empowered auto attack that gives you double the auto attack range and it also makes your auto attack deal bonus damage. This is very important to abuse when you're trading and just fighting in general because a lot of your damage is in this passive. Right here we can take the E level 2, you can also take the W, it's mostly preference and also based on what's needed. Right here I can take pretty much anything, uh, but the E is a dash back that marks the target. Like this. And the second part, so when you mark a target, you can recast that E and you're going to dash to them and then deal a lot of damage. Like this E is like a nuke later on in the game. They actually did it, it's a while ago, but they actually changed it so insane amount of Akali's damage is in the C. It's really crucial that you hit people with the second part of that E if you're going for the maximum burst. And we have the W right now, so that is the Shroud that a lot of people hate Akali for because it makes her uh, um, invisible and it also gives you more energy to work with so you can spam your... Q more often because early game it costs a lot of energy. You don't have the energy pool to use it a lot early on. But with this W you become invisible and you also get, you know, Increase the max energy 100. So when you're inside the shroud and you attack, you'll become visible, and then you go invisible shortly after again. So one of the new items here, Storm Surge, is really nice on Akali. Um, it has become a really really strong item on her. And if you're getting back to lane, you can use your E like this and also your W because it also gives you a little bit of bonus moon speed. But keep in mind your W cooldown is pretty large, but it should be okay by the time you get back to lane. Ripped up. So what you do here early on is that if you're playing against melee matchups, you want to poke with the Q. Right, you want to poke with the Q, you also want to pick up the passive. Every single time you hit an enemy champion with a damaging ability, this circle spawns, right? Walk to the edge to pick up that empowered auto attack and then hit them with that too. Like this. You have to make sure that you're weaving in auto attacks, guys, because um, you don't get to spam your abilities as much as you want to. Damn, we're gonna pick up another kill right here. She can be really obnoxious um, because of that W shroud, makes it really, really hard for the opponent to trade with you. Right, so I'm gonna place a ward here and then I'll back off once again. Oh no, is that a fit, Jax? Nope, it's not, seems like. Awesome, it's going to be a fit nocturne. Alright, so getting the boots as well, and as I said, just use these abilities to get back to lane a little bit faster, you know? It could make the difference between you getting a cannon minion or not. Just use whatever you have. That is not some super important ability with super high cooldown. Oh no, she's going to die. She forgot about the W shield. The same thing again. I'm gonna try to poke a little bit. You want to like weave in and out of the fights. Um, until they are low enough HP for you to all in. Because Akali is an assassin after all. Alrighty, so now we got the ultimate. So the first part of your ultimate is a point and click. And you're gonna dash over the opponent, right? And then after a while you'll be able to use the second part of your ultimate which is similar to an execute. Um, it is not an actual execute, but in the way that it deals bonus damage to low HP targets, and it is a skill shot too. It's something you want to be using at the end of your combos to like maximize the damage. Okay, we know the Jax is topside. 
It's also hard to gank Akali as long as she has the W up. And it's a champ that's very strong in the early game. Um, so if you're the type of player who likes to snowball and take over the entire early game, then this is it. That's another really important combo with the ultimate and the E that I'll be showing um, later on. I did not expect this guy to uh, randomly pop up. Just gonna wait for the W to come back up. Like it's really risky to force fights or trades without the W because this is essentially what protects you from ganks. Just kind of ping that he could be over there. Okay, we'll see him. We'll see him. We good. So he yoinked my ultimate, which is okay. Let's end this. I had a feeling this guy was coming. What? He's still chasing. If they're smart, they're scared. Just gonna wait a little bit to walk out of range. He has the healing. He has the healing, right? So we want to be careful of that. But you see, you have this ultimate. It unlocks a lot of mobility on this champ. And the real important combo I talked about is that normally hitting the first part of your E can be difficult because it's a skill shot. But if you combine that with the ultimate, so what you do is that you press the first part of your ultimate and then you immediately click that E. So while you're dashing towards your opponent, you also use that E and it's going to be a lot easier to hit. Because I said, insane amount of Akali's damage is in that second part of the E. Like it's dealing more than double the damage of the first part of your E, as you can see. It's really, really crucial that you um, hit this ability during fights. You can miss your Q, you know, one or two, but if you miss that E, it's really bad for your damage. Up the ghost, we saw that one. And your W is really important for kiting, so when it is on cooldown, be careful of forcing fights. And you can see your Q is also the wave clear. Akali does not have good wave clear, compared to, you know, traditional mid laners. Because you need to wait for the minions to stack up. Another thing here is that you can also attack your Stroud with your E. You know, if you place down the Stroud and then you E the Stroud, you can also attack it and dash to it. Looks like it's going well. What side? Ooh, Jax is just spam ganking. The wave player is really great, of course, when you're fed. Just how it goes. But if you're not fed, he could be coming mid. But I do have the W. Looks like he's coming. Yeah, he is indeed. You can never have too many kunai. Oh, I could have killed him here. Oh no. Okay, I trolled. I could have killed the Jax right there. Just gonna hold out, right? Oh no. My trolling just gave away two kills. Two shutdowns on top of that. He's halting without having the tentacles. It only spawns one, I believe, since it was only Jax close. But uh, it's also my bad for, you know, attempting a fight. I could just have ran away, but sometimes I like to go for these risky plays. Like, it did end up punishing me right here, but you know, it will help you learn the limits of your champion faster because if you don't go for this risky place ever, you never know what your champion is capable of. I could take this one, but also his W cooldown is pretty low. I don't want to die again. 
who he used to W. We get the plate. Machine. This time around was a bit more patient. I did not insta dive because um, of his help you potentially being up. But he did use it afterwards. Can we take this? I actually don't know. Like, um, I mean, I guess we're fine. He might be coming around again, so I'm just gonna try to see if I can get a flank up in case he does. Or is he up here? Right, getting that return kill without having to use the ultimate and that was because my w is up you see when the w is up he has no way of trading back he cannot see me so i can just stay inside the w wait for him to use his stun for example like i did right here and then i pop right back in all right next the two boots and now we're gonna go for the lich bane it has great synergy you know with her empowered auto attacks could just hold it right there there's no a flash on the Silas, I believe, because he flashed me over here. An ally has been slain. Might go uh hopefully Nocturne does not give him his ults. Right, now we're sitting on double pops, it's going to be Oh he did give ult, okay. Wait what? Wait what? How did that hit? Oh, for sure, I was going to hit the minions. Is he taking this? I make problems disappear. He has the Nocturne ult. I'll probably have to chill a little bit since Jax is also passing mid. And he's also playing with the Electrocute, well, something you can definitely do on Akali as well. I do like to have the benefits of the Conqueror because it makes you scale better. Now, if you want some a strong early game. Definitely, execute is an option. I'm gonna follow up here because yeah, Silas is going to ult. Okay, nice, nice. We have a fit bot lane. That's some good stuff. Gonna use this to get back a bit faster. Remember, this E also works if you want to dash over walls. And another thing here is that if you, if you tag somebody with that E, you mean you uh, as you mark them with the first part of your E, and they CP or something, you can follow up. You just have to be patient and wait. It's great for following, you know, global champions like the Twisted Fate, for example. He has a lot of burst damage. But he does not have anything in extended fights. Which we do, uh, because Akali can work in extended fights because she can go all in or she can go in and out of fights, you know. We win abilities like her auto attacks, empowered auto attacks. So you benefit a lot from the Conqueror. Silas also does, but he opted for the Electrocute because he wanted a stronger early game. Right, he might go for this cannon. He's gonna queue it, I can imagine. Get him. We don't see the jacks. Has to back off. He has my ult, so he has to uh, run all the way. I'm just gonna keep pushing here. No, why did he queue? Is he getting the kill? Ooh, nice play. Well played. And by the way, of course, I'll be showing more games, you know, because it's pretty hard to show how to entirely play the champ based on one game, because we could be having a really good team like we have right now. The game can be really snowball so that's why I like to show, you know, at least two games per video. Take this tower, and then we want to go to the side lane. That gives us more pressure. And if you want, you can play Akali with Flash and TP. You can also do TP and Ignite. Your turret has been destroyed. I don't recommend TP and Ignite unless you are, you know, experienced on the champ. Otherwise, this setup is great and also Flash and TP. So many 
enemies, so many knives. Astral already rotated, that's good. So we just push it from bot here. Allows us to um, stay up in CS. Now, Akali is not the type of champ where you get high CS uh, because she's an assassin, and usually they will have pretty low CS numbers. It's just how it goes because the way they get gold is by kills. If you don't get kills as an assassin, you know, in the early or the mid game, it's pretty bad because they want to snowball. They want to snowball and end it before the enemy champs get to scale up. Ooh. Right, beautiful. Let's see if we can work our way around over here if the Lux comes. Looks like she does. Looks like we want reach huh? It's fine. All good. All good. I have a shot down here, so that's why I'm not going complete ape. Okay, that's a fat Mordecai son. So that is something um, you typically can't really deal with as a Kali, um, normal scenarios. Of course, if you're really fat, you have a much better chance. But tanky champs are pretty hard to deal with. You would have to adjust your build for the extended fights. It recalls no point in me um, going top. Wait, what is that flash, bro? What? And fight this. Magic's fine. Steel's it could be water, so I'm not gonna walk all the way up. If I get queued by the locks, that would be terrible. That's also Mordecai's are coming in. I assume he did use his ultimate to take out our. Um... Oh. You never know. Ooh. See how OP the Shroud is, guys. Like, it's insane. Really hard to uh, counter it for the opponents. But you can just hide in there. If you get hit by a skill shot, you can just hide. Call it redistribution of magic. Hang a little bit, you know? Waiting out the cooldowns. Can I get it? Thank you very much. An enemy is unstoppable. Top lane is having a very hard time. I guess he's a victim of the uh, Ajax camp, just like me. I'll go top. You don't really have the build to deal with something like Mordekaisa, and when he gets to the stage, you really can't do much. Um, so you just look to, you know, last it. You look to farm and last it, and you know, poke him. And if he messes up and gets to low HP, then you can go for the all-in. Go for this guy too. Thank you very much. That's the best once again, since I don't have any sustain. So not having, uh, you know... Sustain can be a bit awkward. We could, we could. Also, one thing, Control Watch does not uh, detect you when you're inside the W. What does though, um, is a sweeper. So it does not reveal you, but it shows your shadow. You know, they can see where you are positioned. But they cannot uh, aim at you with targeted abilities. Unless you reveal yourself or you walk close to enemy towers, because anything that gives true sight, that is how you get detected. So an example would be the Twisted Fate Ultimate, or Fizz Ultimate also gives true sight. Stuff like that. If you just want to push fast, guys, you can use your W for that purpose, because it gives you energy, max energy. So he's gonna destroy us for sure. He realizes that he's way stronger than us. Plus it's Mordecai, so I don't want to walk up. Tanky champs usually no go uh, on Akali. You know, assassins, they shine against these squishy champs. Oh my 
my days cool. I trolled. I can take him out. Oh no, I'm not going to take this one. I trolled a bit. He's gone out, no? Oh, I did not get the ignite off. I hope he's uh, okay though. He's still healthy. Just running around. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. I think I'll just back off here. I don't want to stay when they have silence, so we can just take my ult. Um, I'll sell this, we get the large rod. So the Sonyas, the reason you're getting this is of course it gives you better engage and also safety. Aggressiveness and defensiveness in one item. And also because you know it gives 120 AP now. It actually gives a lot of AP while also being a really good item for the defense. Ooh. Right, the Lich Bane procs, the damage is ridiculous with your passive as well. Bam, Q starts popping these. That's all out here. Did not have enough energy because my W was not ready. You know, the ultimate also helping you with the escapes. Mess up, make a really bad play, then you can use that ultimate to um, get out. Which could still be here, so I do have my W ready, in case he comes. He might come since I don't see him yet. He's still not bugged. He might be waiting for me to use my W. That would be smart if he does, so there he is. If you walk within range, I would just engage, because as long as you have your W, you are pretty safe. Um, I'm walking up. If I hit that E, guys, look at the damage. Almost 700 damage from that second part of the E. It's almost dealing the same damage as the second part of your ultimate. You know, the maximum damage. The only thing here is that your second part of your E does not require your target to be low HP. It deals that damage regardless. Your ultimate, though, does require that they're low HP before it deals the maximum amount of damage. But that's what I'm telling you guys, the second part of your E is like a ultimate worth of damage. I use the W instantly because if Silas has his ultimate up, he'll be able to steal mine and then engage. And then I just go out. We don't want that. Alrighty. What there? I'm just gonna back off since I can buy the stopwatch. Remember, so the stopwatch, it's in this item now, the Seeker Samga, that's why it's also more Expensive. Oh, he's toast. He's going straight down. Let's see. Interesting item. Crypto Crypt Bloom? What's it called? Crypt Bloom? What, what does it say? Well, now we can take down an enemy champ. Oh, is this like a. Um, a the utility based champs? I can imagine utility based AP champs because of this um, healing zone. So, right now, if they have a lot of MR, you'll be going for white stuff. They don't just straight for death cap. Now, Jax is building MR, but he is not our target, you know. In normal circumstances, your targets would be the carries, you know, the Silas, the Twitch, the Locks, that kind of stuff. They're the ones that you are going for. So as long as they are not getting any MR, you don't have to build white stuff. It doesn't matter if the enemy tank is building it. That's for your AD carry to deal with. You are just going for the carries. The tanks will be the job of your AD carry. Put us here, let's see if we can find him. Do not step up, that's no way. I think we can just keep pushing here. And dive him since there's only two people alive. 
So he doesn't insta clear out the entire wave. Also using the abilities to proc the Lich Fang guys helps you push down towers a lot faster than normal. So that was the first game of how to play Akali. I'll of course be showing more games. Welcome back, game 2 it is, and using a different rune page here. The reason for the new rune page is that when you're playing in matchups um, that are heavy snowball reliant, like Fizz for example, then you pretty much need all of the damage that you can get early on in order to get that lead, because whoever gets that lead is going to just snowball out of control. Against like high snowball matchups like the Akali, for example the Fizz, then I like to go for the Electrocute, but to be honest, I don't like Electrocute as much because Congra just scales way better. But it does have, you know, incredible damage for the laning phase. It's way stronger than Conqueror. And one thing to keep in mind against Fizz, um, if you watched the last game, I actually mentioned it, but his ultimate gives him True Sight. If you get tagged by his ultimate and you put down that shroud, it is going to reveal you. It will not make you invisible. So keep that in mind. Your shroud will not help you if you get tagged by his ult. Otherwise, you're both pretty mobile champs. He wants to hit you uh, with that E. Second part of the E because that is what he maxes first in order to be able to wave clear. Which is a skill shot, so that is something you can dodge. And early game, you can punish him. But if he starts that E, he can dodge your Q and then hit you with the damage. Great, let's do Q proc. Looking to abuse that in one spike. Uh, Akali can be really obnoxious, Lin 1. But it costs a lot of energy. But be careful of that. You can go for that short trade and then just back off once your energy is down. Because it's 110 energy for one Q. Got a W2. Against this matchup, for example, you can take your W level 2 because it would help you, you know, dodge his stuff. When he engages, then he cannot target you, and then you can trade back without him being able to do so. Have to make sure that you're constantly healthy against uh, the Fizz. Really important. Against pretty much any AP Assassin or AD Assassin, you have to make sure that you are healthy at all times, meaning not 70% HP, 80% HP, but you know, as close to full HP as possible. Ooh, that was really close. They can't stop. They can track. You should be dead, right? Nice. There we go. There we go. We got to sleep because we got to bully him a lot. Like, he trolled the first few levels. Um, he got poked out too much. And as I told you guys, it's a matchup where whoever wins the laning phase is just going to snowball out of control. This is not like playing a mage into another mage. Where even if you die, you can still come back into the game. This is a one-sided lane to whoever gets the lead. I think I'll get the Dark Seal here for some tankiness and then continue into the new item. And as I said, use your abilities to get back to lane a bit faster. You can start training pretty well once it gets level 3 and 4. Ooh, that's sad. Okay, he's back. If you miss your cues, just back off. Like, you don't stay within range because you don't have anything uh, to answer with when they are, when they want to engage. Oh, that's slow. Not gonna take that second part of the aim. But that was a heavy slow. That's why you don't want to get hit by that E. That's exactly why you don't want to get hit. You can still mess up though. 
even though it's a one-sided lane, that's if you play it right. But if you troll, like he did early on, you can still mess it up for sure. But just make sure that you're staying healthy at all times. I poke him when he walks up to farm these. That's a good dodge. But without his C, he cannot trade back. I had enough energy for my Q. I will be able to proc Electrocute. But you see the pressure you have with the Electrocute. You can play a lot more aggressively. I got the ultimate up. Is that the Kindred getting really fat? Borland just got demolished. Okay, let's see if we can help. Did flash early on. I could probably have flashed him, but it's fine, it's fine. He's low HP. He does have a C though, but if he walks up a little bit, I can just ult. I might go for this cannon, so let's see. I'm just gonna stay in the sides here. And he lost it, so if they decide to greet like this, you just punish them by zoning them off the minions. He's getting the XP, sure. But he's not getting this uh, gold. Okay, his E is down. It's still ult though. Keep in mind, as I told you guys, that ultimate gives him true sight, meaning that it will reveal invisibility. Ooh, if I take this one, I had to flash out. Most likely. I'm just gonna zone him like this. Our oh, jungle got it nice. He's doing a great job of um, zoning him away from the stacks, at least. Ooh, and also getting the kill on top of a shutdown, okay. I'm not gonna ping the Talon because he's gonna greet and try to tower dive the fist and then we end up giving him a kill for no reason. He's trying to bait out my Q. This is something I also do when I play against the Kali. Is that I try to make a waste a Q, you know, by walking in and out of range. I'm just gonna stack up a massive wave and then we just keep poking him. And he used the seed too. That is like his only safety ability. Ooh, man, I thought he was going to step up. Okay, we had to use a flash because I messed up a little bit. Which is okay because I'm getting a plate now. Kindred might come. It would be risky of me to use my W to try to farm with. Rip Nami, but oh, she is not surviving this. Ripperonis. Alright, I can get this. I'm gonna get this as well. And we're gonna get Team 1 boots. Everyone died. I just speed things. So I'm getting the Dark Seal here. Uh, of course, you're expecting it to snowball, but also that HP against assassins helps you become a little bit more tanky, you know? So if they decide to all in and burst you down, you have a bit higher chance of surviving. Against Fisto, what counters him is Sonia's Hourglass. You get that one and his ultimate is non-existent. Will they swap? What? Looks like they swap. Doesn't make any sense though. I don't know why they would do that. Right, let's give them some vision yeah. to make sure that Kindred is not here. Maybe no swap. Maybe Cyan is uh, DC. Who knows? Oh, he can die. Come on. 
Oh, come on, bro. What is that? What is that? That's a double buff for the fish. You might get it, though, if he decides to stay. But who knows what he's doing. Why is he trying to trade? Oh, this is definitely warded. Yikes. I think there's no point in trying to help the bot lane because they are getting uh, destroyed. And Kindred has the ultimate to like stop me from being able to take somebody out. So, just keep up the pushing. We can afford the huge item once we uh, reset. Got to poke him as much as we possibly can because he's gonna heal up with a rip off. He's dead. That's for sure. Why am I getting pinged? Not sure why I was getting pinked. A bit interesting. Gonna ping that he's missing. He could definitely be roaming. Or maybe he's just going bot. No more meditation. But I don't think they need the fist bot, to be honest. They can deal with our bot lane by themselves. But regardless, we're just gonna keep pushing. And get that plate. The old ways just don't work. Did he just ult? The sign is DC. I don't know why. Could be a rage quit. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If they're smart, they're scared. We'll keep up the pushing here. Gonna get the storm search. And also tier 2s. Now we can really start roaming for real. You get a lot of mobility. Also because this item gives you no movement speed. No one tells me what to do. Not me. Mute first. Storm search, tier 2s. Next item can be this. Or if you're struggling in the matchup, you can just get the Sonyas. Because it's a direct counter to Fizz. He can never all in with the ult. Because he won't have an ult against the Sonyas. Little bit of damage here. He does not have any sustain. That's why I'm just going for this and then I will just heal up. He cannot heal up because he has no potions. I take these traits and then I'll just heal up and now I have, you know, still potential. He didn't step up for that one. Ooh, that hit, he would have been toast, bro. Okay, we're good. And Talon taking advantage of their player being AFK. Very nice. Let's keep up the pushing. So now when the tower goes down across, similar to last game, um, you want to swap with your bot lane and if they don't swap, you know, you can look for a gang bot where you try to dive the enemy bot and then you take the tower. So they did take the tower, so that's good, but we see the kindred. Come 
my kid all set. We not. Okay, we good, we good. So I used um the ult and the flash also because I knew that Fizz was going to ult at some point and if I get hit by that I'm of course gone for sure. There's no way I'm making it out. My enemies won't. But let us just go bot. say uh okay Herald. i mean they don't have a top so i'm sure okay that's good because i don't have ult so i would not be able to chase him anyways but if he decides to stay when my ultimate is up then we can look for the dive all right ultimate is up also, I have to, you know, keep an eye on where Kindred is. So Kindred is dead right now, but if Kindred was alive, there's that ultimate that can really make things bad for us. But before going all in, of course, think about what the opponents have that could potentially stop you from getting that kill. Wait, that is wiping out the minions? What? It's not about the killing. It's about who's doing the dying. Okay, the fifth. I'll show one more game because this was a quick one. Because Sign is DC. So let's head on towards the third one. Welcome back for game three, playing against the Diego Mid. So I think this game is a good example of when you can go for this um, build that gives you more damage uh, over time. You know, DPS, higher DPS instead of just straight up burst damage because you're not one shotting a set on a warwick or a viego if it goes for like a half damage half bruiser build so stuff like the rift maker lion race could be good here so that is the build i'll be showing this game i mean he could be going for a squishy build and in that case the standard lich bane build or the storm search you know those would be still be pretty good because your goal is still to get to the back line so here that would be the lucian right in team fights you just run the lucian and the jana down but if you're forced to meet these guys or set and the viego this um high dps tanky build allows you to perform better because it gives you a lot of extra damage in extended fights So the new runes, they removed the ammo shards I think, so I have tenacity in the runes now, in the shard I mean. So when you're playing against the melee champ of course you want to abuse the fact that you have this Q and the passive. Allowing you to pressure um, a lot early on. I thought I dodged his Q previously. So I did not expect to get hit. Diego can also be strong there one because when he Q somebody and max an auto attack, it's like double auto attack. I'm gonna take the W here. If I get ganked by the Warwick, I have this W to dodge his fear. And against it's really OP against auto attack reliant champs. I'm just gonna play it a bit slow. You know, the usual thing, where you just try to poke. And gonna heal up here, since I'm getting close to low HP, so we don't want to give Warwick that movement speed buff. Makes him really good at chasing us down. But we're slowly willing down the Viego. He has not yet used his potion. If you want to poke on the tower, do it when the auto attack is coming out, like this. This way I did not have to use my flash. That's good. 
when my ability is on cooldown, I have to watch out a little bit here uh, because he can engage whenever he wants to, pretty much. Where is he going? If I take this one, he might flash on, that's how I know. That's a risky play we don't want to make. Just gonna flash to make sure that he actually dies, you never know. But, that's the kill right there, that's what we wanted. I'm just gonna back off here, cause the wave is in a fine spot. I'd like to trim it a little bit just so I can insta show it, but we have to use the chance to reset now that we got the kill. I think I'm not gonna do this. Instead, I'm gonna get this, this, and sustain and a control ward. Mobility is really important. Fighting with the auto attacks. Should have trimmed the wave a little bit. It looks like he does not get to shove it in in time, so we are picking up most of these minions. And we're going for the Rift Mega, of course, as I said, helps you in these extended fights. Oh, no, I should not take now. What am I doing, bro? I forgot my Dobby was in cooldown. I don't know why I took that one. Just took a really awful trade. That was really dumb. Is he a recall again? I might have recalled again, so I'm just gonna push it. If you want to push, you can just use your W, because you get more energy that way, allowing you to push faster. And we're gonna go ahead and reset as well. Got some MR, okay. Get this, and then run back to the lane. He reset on a bad time, seems like he's losing the minions. I work alone. It's better for everyone. Where's the Diego? Oh there he is. Oh, what has this guy been doing though? He's so low. Was he trying to gank or something? Well, that's good. Now we have the ultimate up. And he is within lethal range, but still has to watch out for the tower. Fine. If he resets, we're just gonna show this. I'm gonna use the W, allowing him to push it faster. Because you can use more Qs. Only do this when you are safe. Meaning that if you are in no risk of getting ganked, and if you are, at least make sure you can win the gank. Get the fight. Gotta play it off of his bad reset. Ori coming this way. Let's see. Go out here. In case I don't get the control, I'm just pinging to at least get the 5 gold. As MR, he has no AD. Oh my days, what am I doing, bro? Oh my god, I just ended that so hard, that was so bad. Whoops, my bad, my bad. You see, this is what happens when you don't uh, probably use the combo. So that was really dumb right here. I trolled big time with the combo, so I did not attack him with the E. And I did not get enough damage off to put him low HP before ulting. A lot of these factors just resulted in me dying for no reason. That's a stupid way. And also because, you know, the build I'm using right now, it's not heavy upfront damage. I'm gonna go and push. Let's go, let's go. So first when you ult, you want to be able to E. So if he stands inside the wave, that can be a bit difficult. They can't stop me. For sure. 
I just put him back into the game, that's not good. He wants to go for the blue. Oh, I am so dead. Okay, we got one, we got one, that's fine. Warwick should not have died there. Boy extending a little bit. Lost a bit of focus when I died mid. That's stupid a mistake I did. Wait, why is she focusing the support? Wait, what? Why was she hitting the Janna? I don't understand. Janna got the kill though. Fine, it's fine. We need a bit more gold, then we have the Rift Maker. You can see it makes us deal bonus damage in extended fights, and that's great. And you also get Omnivamp for, for some of that sustain, and then also some of your bonus health will be converted into AP. So we get this. Next item is going to be the Lyandris. More a Rooster kind of Akali. Still have a lot of damage. Not a complete Rooster. I'm gonna do have the alts. Him as much as we can. Warwick is top side, so we're fine. Oh, he flashed, okay. Flashed out. I think I want to push this because he might be trying to do the Herald. Is he doing the uh, Herald? Or the uh, White Grumps, I mean? I'm gonna check really fast. He doesn't have Flash Up anyways, since he did use it recently. Oh, he's top again. Okay, they're doing great. Go for it. That's a lot better. It's risky, like it makes it easier to hit the second part of your E if you use it immediately after using the first ults. But if you miss it, it can definitely mess you up big time. I'd like to base soon, so I think I'm gonna push out this wave so I can get the Rift Maker. Not. Dash is forward, I will drop down this route. He bought the max. Help me push, bro. Nice. Good, good, good. Right. And buy um, the Rift Mega now. And then after that, it's going to be the Lion Race. The Rift Mega, and then you can go into the Lion Race here. Tormentor, Suffering. As I think there's the Unique Passive still around, um, but they have different names. Because it's not the same. This item is the same here. But these are two different names. But the thing is that it helps you with the maximum health damage. Torment. And this one, White Corruption, also helps. Maximum health damage. It's a lot of extra damage that you're getting in extended fights, basically. It's not a build I normally use because when you pick a Kali, you don't want to pick her into heavy Rusa comes. But when you're blind picking and they use that to counter pick with, then of course it's um, nothing you can do. Too bad. Too good. 
on the plate. See the vehicle coming in. Now our damage is a lot better in the extended fights. We're going to hit a lot harder. Oh, okay. Use that one to dodge. Very nice. Okay, got that one out. That's huge. You're relatively safe as long as you have your W. Um, so be careful not wasting that if you think that you might get ganked or something. That would be pretty terrible. I'll run through this. I mind thing it seems like. He ran away. Yup, Diana, great. I saw her coming in here, that's why I did not run away. I just waited a bit. You see, be patient inside your W shroud. Like, be really patient and keep in mind what they have that could potentially mess you up. You know, Warwick Ultimate, for example. If he hit me with that one because it's a suppression, I would be doomed big time. Coming that way. Is he still staying? Just gonna clear out the vision. Okay, she's met. We good, we good. Also getting a free Herald. And got level 11 and we have a pretty good CS lead over the uh, mid lane too. I want to push fast I'm just gonna drop down the W for the energy. You don't have to stay inside the shroud to get the energy as long as it's active you get it. Where oh, yeah, right he has the blade of the Ruin King makes him really strong in those uh, one versus ones. I'm gonna go bot now. Earth and Sivir can easily hold mid. Like they have insane wave clear. An ally has been slain. Your team has Why is this clown going bot? This is what's considered griefing, right? She just denied me uh, XP and gold both lanes because she played like a bronze. Or thinking like a bronze rather. So. It's like typical low elo mistakes. If this was in high elo, she would get flamed right now. Oh, I missed a Q, I think. My mouse slipped. But that E, that's why if you tag somebody with that E, guys, and you know they have flash up or something, just wait using it. Oh no, I did not mean to take it. What? <laughs> oh my days. I still don't know how to use it, probably. It's also sometimes when you don't mean to click it and then you just end up running a. Uh... Into it. We good, we good. I'll back off here. I'm pretty low HP, so I don't want to stay and go away. 900 gold. Let's get the blasting one. And I'll go. Siva is going well. She's going top. I hope she is. So we have somebody to defend from that wave. Laning phase is over, so you just, you know, if you can, try to get your farm and XP in the silence. Usually it forces the enemy AD carry or mid to meet you in the silence and then you can just, you know, chase them down. You have a lot of mobility. I could go bot and take out the tower. That did not hit. 
Thought my Q was going to hit for sure. Just push this, that's why I'm using uh, my Shroud. Okay. Recall cancelled. We good, we good. And now once we base, we have the Alliance Race. This is a lot of damage, and also if you're playing against a beefy comp, you know, that's why you want to be using this. Most of the time, you, you're not using this. Getting exhausted? What? Just had to do it this way so I don't die to the tower and still secure the kills. Did not expect the exhaust. But let's back off here and purchase the Lion Race. After that, what you build? Standard AP items, you know. Deathcap, Void Stuff, Sonya's Hourglass. Items like that, depending on what they're building. So, do they have a lot of MR? They don't really, you know. He's buying a little bit right now, but. It's not going to change a lot. Look it up into this. I think I'm gonna wait until I can afford a large rod for the uh, death cap. But the FF, so this was how to play Kali with a lot of different builds. So hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see y'all next time.